Hi everyone, due to popular demand I've created a small video just to help some of the beginners uh, correct their, their model, modeling mistakes that they might have made in um, previous operations and that they can't undo. So this is just um, four common little problems that occur when you're doing SketchUp modeling and even happens to the best of, best of us of course. So uh, they're just a couple of little different ways of, of getting out of a couple of issues. So the first one is actually this little four-sided wall which um, if we look at it from top on and let's let's change this first from from um, perspective view to parallel projection. So when we look at it from this view, we can see that yes, this object is just off axis. You can see that it's a bit wonky this way. We can, if we look down, we can just see that the side there is showing. So there's obviously a, the box has a little bit of a tilt. If we look at it from directly from front on, so if I just look at it from front on, we can see that uh, we've got a bit of got a bit of side showing here and it's actually yeah just tilting off the ground a little bit there so what I'm going to do in order to fix this uh, is I'm just going to rotate this object on its three axes back into alignment again you can see now that it, that I'm just I've just selected it with the selection tool and it is a group and you can see in the selection the bounding box of the selection actually does not wrap snugly around this object even though it is a rectangular box. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go inside the group because it's better to do the work that you do the correcting work on the geometry that's inside the group rather than on the group itself. So I'm going to select all the geometry by triple clicking and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the rotate tool and I'm going to start rotating but what I'm going to do before I start rotating is I'm going to use the arrow keys on the keyboard to change the axes of the protractor so that I rotate it on, on controlled planes. So for example I'm going to rotate it on this plane here. So I'm going to start by doing this plane and just click on this corner here. You don't have to go on any particular corner but um, it's once you start on one corner you should do the operation from, from the same corner each time. So I've changed it to the green protractor and I'm going to click on that point there and then I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to rotate it onto the red axis outside of active. And just click. Now I'm going to go over and I'm going to rotate, repeat the same command and I'm going to rotate it now and to the red protractor. And I'm going to click from that point there and then I'm going to click to that point there. And I'm just going to bring it now so that it's so this one rotates onto the green axis outside active. So just click to lock that in. And now I'm going to do is, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the on the horizontal plane. So I'm going to press the up arrow just to make sure that it's locked. And you see when I press the up arrow, it says locked plane. And then I'm going to go to that point again, and I'm going to zoom over to this point here, and I'm going to put that onto the red axis. So already you can see that. It's actually looking like it's going to be in the right spot. So now if I now exit this, exit the group, and I'm going to look at it from top view. So we can see the object is now straightened. If I look at it from front view or from one of the side views, you can see also that it is nice and straight along the bottom. There's no kinks in the lines or anything like that. It's all straight. So that's basically one of um, one of one of many problems that can happen if you just if you somehow create your base object slightly off horizontal that that can often occur so that's just one way of just getting out of that now let's have a look at the next example so the next example is a group of lines that appear to create a horizontal surface but for some reason it's, it's obviously the lines aren't all completely horizontal and um, the face in, that, that should be inside, that should be bounded by these lines has not, has not formed. It hasn't formed. And this could be one of two reasons. Either the lines are all joining, but uh, one of them is sort of is off horizontal and somehow that's affected the object and it won't form the, the face. Or some of these lines have not connected properly and so what I'll need to do is I'll need to just look, zoom into those intersection points just to see whether they're all, all the lines are touching. And in this particular case, no. 
they're all touching this one aha okay so this this is the point here where those lines are not touching so what I can do is um, I can either draw these two lines again or I can work out which one is actually not horizontal so let's do that so let's just grab our measuring tool and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to one of these points here and I'm going to lock it using the up arrow on the keyboard so that we're locked in the vertical direction and then I'm just going to go to all these points so they're all they're all flat so all these lines are all horizontal lines but then when we go down to here and we click on this one that one says zero but this one says approximately two millimeters so there's a distance there of approximately two millimeters so the problem is with this line over here it goes from zero millimeters in the horizontal to two minus two so I'm just going to so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to redraw this so I'm just going to delete that that particular line and then I'm going to draw from this point here across to this point here and as you can see it's now happy that all those lines are horizontal and it's created the the horizontal face in there for me so yeah so that fixes that one let's have a look at this one so this one on the outset it looks good it looks like it's a it's a nice orthogonal rectangle which is what we're after um, but when we just zoom in you can just see here you see on the line here there's just a couple of little kinks those little kinks just indicate to me that that line is not actually in alignment with the uh, with the red axis it's slightly out of alignment and I can confirm this by if I measure this line from here to here 4000 that's good and if I measure it from here to here and we got approximately 4004 millimeters which is obviously not what it should be it should be four millimeters and if I just click on these ones here just to check them so that's six, so it should be six, yep. And this one from here to here, it says it's approximately six. So my guessing is is the problem is actually is this line here. That's the actual problem. And when you and when you zoom in and you just see those little wonky the little wonkiness in the line, that's an indicator to me that that line is not straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line which is from this point here, which I know this line here is four thousand millimeters. So I'm just going to click here. And I'm going to make sure that you see how we've got that. See how we've got the red line there. So that sh indicates to me that that line is on the red axis. So I'm just going to draw that line and just click it. Now, if I zoom into this point here, you can see here that yes, this line is actually wonky and it's just slightly off the off the red axis. And if I do a little tape measure from there to there, it's approximately four millimeters, which is which is um, the amount that our dimension was out for, from when we measured it before. So I'm just going to delete that line and I'm just going to delete those two lines. And now, if we just do our, sorry, just do our tape measure now, we can see 4,000, yes, and here, 4,000, good. So I'm fairly satisfied now that this box is, is orthogonal. I guess it could be isosceles, uh, sorry, a, um, parallelogram but um, I can I can check the angles of that too to see if they're 90 but I'm pretty sure now that this is this is an orthogonal right angled object right the last one is this one here so this one here um, we can see here that we've just got a little wall um, stuck to a to a surface and if I just zoom in here we can see that mm, okay those points somehow didn't get clicked together and it's if I do a little tape measure it's less than a millimeter um, this little problem so it's not a big issue but it just causes a little bit of um, wonkiness later on if, if some of your tools you sort of they won't quite work and um, when you've got a little problem like that and if you measure from here to here it's probably not going to be a whole number oh, it says it's approximately uh, 2300 millimeters so yeah it's it's close but just that little error there is enough to sort of mess things up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check the dimensions here. So this dimension here is 4907 and this dimension here is 4907. Well, let's, let's turn this back to 4900. So let's just um, make a copy of this and I'm just going to make a copy and we're going to make it along the red axis and we go 4. 900. 
So we just make it a nice clean dimension. So we can see that we've got a little bit of excess there. So let's just use our um, eraser tool to delete that. And we can see we've got a couple of little lines there overlapping. So let's just delete those two. I'm using the X-ray tool. If um, if uh, you haven't got a hotkey set up on your keyboard, then you can actually get to it by going to um, View Edge Style, um, Face Style, sorry, and X-ray, and that'll that'll turn it on and off between X-ray mode. But it's good to have a little shortcut key, and I just use the X key, set that up as a shortcut to to swap between X-ray modes. And then uh, let's just now let's just resize this. I'm going to use the push pull button just to put that to there. And I'm just going to look at this other side here and just click from here to here. Okay, and I'll just click the X-ray here. So yeah, we still got that little. There's an extra little bit of line there, but that's all right for now. So if I just measure that now, we've got. 4900 which is good and there 4900 okay so the issue now is just from here from this point here to this point here is 2000 so if I click from here to there right so we still got that approximate sign there so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go in using my x-ray tool line again and I'm just going to push pull this face to that line there Um, so now instead what we've got is we'll have approximately 300 so we just need to fix that last little bit there so I'm just going to get my get my eraser tool and I'm just going to delete those lines that shouldn't be there and then I'm just going to use the push pull tool again and I'm going to type 300 and just pull it out by 300 so now when I measure from here to here you can see that the approximate sign is gone now so that means it's precisely 2300 and if I look in at that intersection it looks pretty clean now and I can zoom in a long way well that's a long way and yeah and it's and it is fine so yeah so let's just fix that problem fairly easily now one thing that um, some people have asked me about too is this color difference between faces you can see that this color this face is a sort of bluey gray color and these ones are white and people like to see all white obviously on their model rather than the odd bluey gray face and what it is is that SketchUp has uh, assigns a front side and a back side to any face that you create and when you see this blue bluey gray color um, that basically means that the object is showing its back side um, instead of its front face front side so all we need to do to, to correct that is if we just select that face by just using the selection tool and clicking on it and then if we just right click you'll see that the number of options come up and we just need to do reverse face and that'll reverse that face so everything's all white again so that's an easy thing to fix and I can do it with this one as well reverse face yeah so those are just a couple of little hints for correcting common errors in SketchUp models and uh, suitable for, for beginners but also intermediate and advanced alike though um, they're just um, little things that you just need to watch out for when you're modeling just to keep things neat and, and um, so that all your tools and everything works as you expect it. Anyway, I hope that's helpful to someone. Thanks, bye.